Hello dear fans, friends and subscribers. Uh, this is your host Ram uh, talking to you on this uh, Cricket Happening show. Uh, yes, uh, don't go by the quality of the video, the photo. I'm doing it at night. But as you all know dear friends, subscribers, this is vacation time for me. So I'm just trying to connect to you. So I know the quality is bad. Uh, I'm not in my professional outfit. Uh, I'm doing it at night, there's no fixed timing, any time I come and do my cricket show, it's all due to your loyalty to this cricket show, dear cricket fan. So, whether you don't, you like it or not like it, I'm in the sense that uh, I know there have been comments coming that the quality is poor. Yes, what to do? I mean, I have no other choice with whatever the limited resources that I have at my disposal during my vacation, I'm still doing this cricket show. I know. Uh, the images are distorted, uh, the sound is too much sometimes, a uh, lot of things happening. Anyway, let's not uh, get into all that and uh, let's get my uh, my cricket show going here. So there will be a little bit of excitement, less, uh, lesser excitement here. Uh, reason being it's night time, so I don't want to disturb my next door neighbors. So well, as far as uh, today's uh, cricket happening show is concerned, well, as I'm talking to you, one an, an exciting match has come to an end here at the uh, at the, uh, the at the capital of Bangladesh in Dhaka. Today was the last match of the Bangladesh Zimbabwe tour of Bangladesh, and as you know, Bangladesh had won the first T20 match, and what a way for Zimbabwe to finish it off in a T20 match by leveling the series in the last over. Zimbabwe winning the match by three because it's a sensational win I would say for Zimbabwe because everything looked lost when they had five wickets down for 39 runs chasing 135 for nine set up by Bangladesh but there was one hero today he would be called and hero all-rounder no doubt about that when I said I mean have you heard about Zimbabwe getting 18 runs for the final over and that's what precisely happened and I'm going to enact it for you but I'll just give you a brief as to what happened Bangladesh were the ones who actually batted first they made 135 for 9 of their 20 overs and Zimbabwe batted so Zimbabwe as I said they were absolutely down in the dumps <laughs> and here they come up in trumps come up trumps with Neville Mazira smashing 18 runs of the final over, 19 runs to be precise I suppose because he two sixes uh, and yes he hit 18 runs, they required 18 runs, the final over was being bowled by Nasir Hussain of Bangladesh, Zimbabwe needed 18 runs, they still had yesterday's hero Malcolm Waller at the crease who holds the record for the fastest 50 by Zimbabwe in T20 cricket but he was dismissed in the in the in that final over but that really didn't uh, cow down Mazira who he really uh, decided that the only way to deal with the ball is to really hit it into the fence or out of the fence over the fence that body precisely he played some magnificent shots to win the match 18 runs required and Neville Mazira the all-rounder had made 18 runs to actually win the match for Zimbabwe and he was truly elated, why not? So just giving you uh, a sort of a synopsis here. Now this was the match situation. At the end of over 18, Zimbabwe were 112 for sex. They needed 24 runs of the 12 balls. But the 19th over was being bowled by Mustafa Zul Rahman, the left arm bowler. And he really kept things on a tight leash by conceding just 6 runs. Uh, to Mazira and Waller and then look at what happened now this is where all the sensational over started the, the 20th over uh, now I'm going to enact it for you uh, it was um, it was Nasir Hussain was the baller uh, and he was bowling the final over Waller was at the crease uh, and Waller after already done all the uh, big hitting uh, where he had actually reeled out 40 of 27 balls to two fours and three sixes, uh, probably with a lesser bit of severity than what uh, than how he got to his uh, fastest T20 50 
in, in his uh, international career. But today, in the, the 20th over, uh, in fact, Waller had to swing, there was no doubt about it. He went for a big slide, uh, but uh, he was taken at long on. So that was a big blow for uh, Zimbabwe's chances. Uh, 18 runs could have been still expected. Uh, I mean, could have been still been uh, something that they could have expected with Malcolm Waller to face. But when Malcolm Waller fell at the very first day over the final over, uh, it looked like it was all over for Zimbabwe. And one never in the wildest of dreams would have thought that Neville Matzeva, who already did a good turn with the ball today, picking up two wickets for 25 of his full quota. And let's see what Neville Matzeva did to the Bangladeshi baller Nasser Hussain. The second ball, uh, Nasser Hussain came in and bowled to Neville Matzeva, and what a shot that was. I mean, this is something uh, I would say it's a super little shot. Because under the circumstances, you are under extreme pressure, and Neville Matzeva has uh, really taken Nasser Hussain and slammed him over the covers. It is like a drive. He drove Nasser Hussain over the covers for a sex. Now, that is something I've seen Vivian Richards do it, drive over the covers for a sex, and what a shot that would have been. Uh, so that was the uh, first shot uh, that happened. Uh, Neville Matziva uh, was um, uh, hit, uh, Neville Matziva hit a sex, so that really brought the equation down with four balls remaining. Uh, they required another, uh, another 12 runs. So four balls and 12 runs, it was anybody's game. And Matziva of the third delivery pulled the ball down the ground and headed away to the, uh, to, to the strikers and the taking two runs. So now the creation was coming, three balls remaining, and they required uh, ten runs to go. So the fourth delivery, uh, one was really watching it with lots of keen interest here as Nasir Hussain came in and bowled to Matziva it was a ball, it was a, not a good delivery, he bowled it full, he bowled it wide, it was Matziva who had already decided the only way to win and that was the only way one could play, one in the bat and even though uh, it was not uh, something which could have, I would say, didn't come from the middle of the bat, didn't really matter, it actually came up the thick edge of the bat and flew over the vacant third man area for a boundary and now the equation was six runs required uh, from two balls but Neville Matziva surprised one and all not even waiting for the final ball to be bowled as this was a shot which was hit with some awesome power as Nasir Hussain was sent over the stands for the six it was a lovely shot one could say because it was hit straight down the ground I could say it was high, uh, high, high and handsome and the ball sailed into the stands for a six and Matziva threw his bat and he was absolutely, uh, uh, I mean, joyous and why not, he was elated and Zimbabwe from a situation where there were 39 for 5 at one stage had actually leveled the series, it was not a matter of only leveling the series but the way it was done, 18 runs to that, they were reeling at 39 for 5 in the ninth over and here comes up Zimbabwe to come here and totally, totally surprise Bangladesh on the final match of this tour of Bangladesh where they, with 18 runs to play, never much Zimbabwe all round, they took the man of the match award which was absolutely justified as he took them to victory uh, in this final uh, T20 match by Fairy Hill, thus leveling the, the two-match T20 series 1-1. One, one. What a superb display by Zim uh, Zimbabwean bats, uh, Zimbabwean all-rounder Neville Matziba. Because first, uh, what he did is he did very well with the ball, as I said. Fairy was home made in 2 for 25, and here he comes to surprise one and all with his uh, wonderfully, uh, wonderful and brutal hitting, one could say, as uh, he got the uh, victory for Zimbabwe and he, this innings would be remembered by him for quite a long time. He was, I mean, to get 18 runs of the final over takes some real taking. I mean, one could understand that 18 runs in the final over, I think this is a stupendous job Madziba has made and Madziba has made a big statement here according to me as far as T20 cricket is concerned. So Neville Madziba, 
928 of just 19 galleries, the three fours and two sixes, getting the victory for Zimbabwe, leveling the series, and I think Zimbabwe couldn't expect much, um, anything um, more than this. What a what a display from Neville Madziva. I would call him a star all rounder, hitting 18 runs in the final over with two sixes in that. Now, just talking about this game, Bangladesh were the ones who got it first. They got 135 for nine the ball. There was a real struggle for the Bangladeshi bat batsmen. Uh, nobody could really, really uh, body the opener, Sami Mikbal and uh, Emil Case, who started off like a train uh, in three overs. They reeled off 34 runs with Sami Mikbal contributing 21 of 15 deliveries with 1, 4, and 2, 6 is in old case, making 10 of 11, 2, 4, but Anamal Hutt was the uh, highest scorer in this uh, Bangladesh innings, making 47 of 51 balls with 3, 4, other than that, Mr. Durahim making 9 of 8 with 1, 4, 17 from Sabir Rahman of 18 balls with 1, 4, and then there were no double double digit figures for either of the, any of the uh, Bangladesh lower order that when Nasir Hussain was out for 3, Mahmoudullah for 8, Mashrafa Mataza from North, Arab for Sunny for 5, Mustafa uh, Rahman and Ali Minasin were not out on 1 apiece, 135 for 9, the balling figures Madziva uh, really bowled well, 225, 3 for 30 for Tanasha Paniandra, Chisoro impressed once again with his right arm off spinners, one could say, Toro 127, Williams 128, and Creamer 221. But look at the Zimbabwean card, they were in real tatters like in the previous uh, one day international where they lost uh, wickets uh, uh, in, in a very very regular manner. Sunil Raza and uh, Regis Chakab were consumed pretty early in the piece. In fact uh, they lost Sunil Raza for 5, 6 balls with 1, 4, Chakab for 4, 11 balls. Williams was out to Allah Amin Hussain for not and Craig Irvine was run out for 13 but again when uh, after Craig Irvine was out the hope was there with Chidumbra uh, at the crease with Luke Zongwe, but uh, Chinumra himself being a victim of Rapid Sunny uh, for not uh, that really tightened matters for Zimbabwe 39 for 5 in the 9th over. But then Zongwe offered some good support uh, to the hard hitter Malcolm Wall at the other end by contributing in a good partnership where they slowly resurrected uh, things for Zimbabwe to a, uh, to a good extent. Uh, by adding a 50 year old runs, but then Zhongwe uh, was a victim of Alamin Hussein for 34 or 38 balls with 1 4. Uh, and then Malcolm Waller was there in the middle, and then it was up to Malcolm Waller and Madziva. Malcolm Waller and Madziva really took it on, but then, as I said, then I already recreated uh, what really happened in the penultimate over and the final over. And well, really, one has to really drop our hats to. Neville Madziva looking to be a star all-rounder in the making for Zimbabwe. Today he has become a star, no doubt about it. Smashing 20 years, just 19 deliveries, 3 fours and 2 sixes. But the good part of that, or the most important part that one could talk, is in a T20 match, 18 runs to win of the final over. Neville Madziva delivers it for Zimbabwe. I mean, I said, as I said, it's a great, a great batting display from this, uh, uh, from this uh, uh, bloke, uh, ne Neville Metziva. And I'm sure we're going to hear a lot about this uh, bloke here. Now, 137, so thus the, the Zimbabwean tour of Bangladesh ended uh, on a high note, I would say, by leveling the series, T20 series 1-1. One, one. Uh, Murtaza, none for 27. Al Amin Hussain, 3 for 20. Mr. Zay Rahman, 1 for 12, both superbly. 1 for 26 and Nasser is saying 3.5 overs no made him 1 for 45. Now one thing that uh, beats me here uh, is that Nasser is saying has been costly so probably a bit of more confidence on the part of the Bangladeshis and they, would, well, they never would have expected the unexpected and that the unexpected that Neville Madziva brought about here uh, at the Dhaka Cricket Stadium in Bangladesh to disappoint the Bangladesh fans but uh, regain the Zimbabwean fans. So player of the series was Malcolm Waller, who uh, really showed uh, that uh, he's a good conqueror of the ball and player of the match, Neville Madziva, without a shadow of doubt. And uh, really, once again, I would say congratulations to Zimbabwe and, congratu and congratulations for a wonderful display uh, of hitting by Neville Madziva in the final over uh, to get 18 runs of the final over. Well, from here, I'm going to shift off to another match and uh, let me also tell you 
that the match between the second day's play between South Africa and India was completely worked out today in Bangalore. And now I'm going to talk about this match. Now this was another match which really, really one would have, uh, the unexpected has happened on this particular day. I would say as far as cricket happenings are concerned because New Zealand, who yesterday were 104 2, put up a solid reply. In fact, uh, this is something which would have stunned Australia. I would have never expected this with the New Zealand score on the close of play on the third day of the second test match against Australia at the Waka in third, um, uh, saying 510 for six tickets. In reply to Australia is 559. Now, this is something one would have never expected, but that happened with the overnight pair of Kane Williamson getting on to eternal century with his classic driving down the wicket um, and driving through all parts of the wicket with scoring 166 runs of the 24 fours and look at the other guy Ross Taylor who one would have probably we know that Ross Taylor has been struggling with his form but we definitely saw some confidence building in his uh, the way he was playing his strokes yesterday but that really came into full bloom today as um, Ross Taylor took the Australian attack by the scruff of the neck one could say the way he played it was a really really uh, a not worth watching as Ross Taylor took everything to rest today as he became the first New Zealand player to score a double century against Australia in test cricket. Now that is a great record. The previous record was held by Martin Crowe, the stylist Martin Crowe, former great batsman from New Zealand. Martin Crowe made 188 against Australia. I think it was 188 and unbeaten runs. And now Ross Taylor has gone on to become the first New Zealand player to, uh, to score a double century against Australia in test cricket and what a feeling that would be and Ross Taylor was still there at the end of the day unconquered on 235 with 34 boundaries he continued uh, to play some beautiful strokes and this partnership that happened between New Zealand between Kane Williamson and Ross Taylor raised the bar today for New Zealand because the partnership they came together when the score was 87 for 2 and they realized uh, uh, 200 and, uh, um, uh, six, 265 runs they realized for the third wicket and I'm told this is an all-time record for New Zealand against Australia for any wicket. This is the highest partnership that they ever had against Australia in test cricket. So a lot of records were broken today. Take a bow to Australia. He's looking good for a triple century I, I reckon. He was not on 235. 34 fours. Brendan McLean was bowled at March for 27. 4 fours. BJ Watling was out for 1 with the bowling of stack. Bracewell was out for 12. Mark Craig was tipping Mark, uh, uh, Ross Taylor company with 7 not out to his name as New Zealand finished off the third day on a great note scoring 510 for 6 tickets. Only 49 runs still remaining for New Zealand to get into the lead. And this is Australia. Uh, for, for Australia, this would have really stunned them. But also, let me tell you, Mitchell Stark today got star, uh, he hit the 160 kph uh, on the clock today. Now, as you know, the 160 kph has been hit by only two bowlers in the past. One is Shoy Bakhtar of Pakistan, the former uh, Pakistan ace fast bowler, and the former, uh, not former, and the Australian. Uh, 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 you know, uh, really, real tricky, uh, Sean Tate, uh, Shane, uh, Sean Tate who has done it. Uh, now Mitchell Stark today delivered a Yorker which was at 160 clicks. Now Mitchell Stark was bowling superbly and the way he bowled today, well, it was a real uh, something uh, that, um, it was a real sight to watch Mitchell Stark generating so much of pace that he was actually uh, consistently clocking at 150 at times and uh, then finally uh, even though Mitchell Stark bowled so quickly I thought credit goes to Ross Taylor, Kane Williamson to negotiate the bowling in the best possible manner and take New Zealand uh, to such a score uh, that New Zealand themselves would have never imagined. But all in all credit to New Zealand for putting up 
uh, a gallant display here uh, and looking at the bowling Mitchell Stark uh, I thought uh, really impressed everyone and really showed what a very good pity he is turning out to be 36 83 runs and two wickets one you get a piece for Josh Hazelwood Mitchell Johnson and Adam Lyon and also Mitchell Marsh and that was the end of the day so as I said the cake was taken by Kane Williamson and uh, Ross Taylor as Ross Taylor became the first double centurion for New Zealand in test cricket against Australia and uh, well I could say no further here uh, as uh, I'm about to end my uh, cricket and I think uh, for New Zealand uh, they still require 49 runs and one would be hoping uh, that Ross Taylor uh, does what uh, David Warner couldn't do of going and scoring a triple century. Can Ross Taylor uh, do something different tomorrow by scoring a triple century? So all eyes will be on Ross Taylor and if he does so, uh, New Zealand are definitely going to be in the lead and uh, the match could turn, uh, I mean we are coming into the fourth day but the match could get a bit interesting uh, with New Zealand putting up uh, such a wonderful display of batting today. Well, dear fans of Carbers, uh, uh, it's about time for me to end this cricket show today. And uh, he, this is Ram here saying good night to you all, dear fans of Carbers. Thank you.